Yeah, Dan O'Brien, the uncertainty is obviously right through the economy. What do you think the effects will be? I think the effects will be absolutely enormous. We are an extremely open economy. Uh, we import nearly everything we consume and we export nearly everything we produce. And if you start messing with the ways in and out of the country for all of that stuff that goes in and out, um, the economy here could suffer a, a hammer blow. In my view, we will suffer more in a no-deal scenario than Britain itself, because Britain's a much bigger economy that is much more self-dependent, self-reliant. You've been arguing for a long time now that our insistence on the backstop is going to be the impediment for Brexit in Britain. Um, but what else could we have done and what else should we do now? Well, I I've always taken the view that Brexit would be a disaster and we needed to limit the damage. And if we tried to eliminate the damage, we'd lead to what we've led to today. I'm not surprised that we are where we are today and that the British are not swallowing the backstop. It is actually a very dramatic uh, move. It's a very dramatic suggestion. There are a lot of constitutional implications uh, that I think viewers probably be bored with at this time of night. But it is a dramatic, and in my view, it was a much too dramatic a demand that sought something we want, everyone wants, absolutely no border ever, but an absolutist position on something like this, in my view, was always going to lead to an increased risk of the worst case outcome. So we're, we are where we are, famously, as the phrase goes. So what do you do now? OK, well, I think over the next week and 10 days before the EU lead leaders meet, uh, there's going to be, we'll see how it plays out in Britain. Possibly they will agree to an extension, and hopefully the other EU countries will agree to that. The longer the extension, the greater the chance Brexit will never happen. Hopefully that'll be the case. But in the 10 days between the time the leaders meet and Brexit day, there will be a choice to be made if it's heading for no deal, we will have a choice in this country. The government in this country will have a choice. Take cave the back on, stuff. Cave on, on the back stuff? If, if you get into a negotiating position where it's either or, it's not like, you know, we, I, I want to buy your house and I go up a little, you go down a little, we meet in the middle. It's more like me going in and saying to you, I'm going to buy your house, but I, want, I insist that the only way the deal is going to be done is if that you leave that family heirloom as part of the deal. You say no, I say yes. The whole thing breaks down because I insist that you leave that family piece of furniture. That's what it's like. It can't be fudged. The backstop is an either or. And the government's going to face it, find itself in a position within 10 days, if the British don't extend and seek, uh, uh, seek an extension, that that will be the, the question for the government of this country. Uh, 17 days time, 29th of March. What can we expect if there is a, a no deal or if there's potentially a no deal? Well, this is unprecedented. We don't know. It's a big range of possible outcomes. But a worst case scenario is extremely serious. As I say, we are hugely dependent on things that we import into the country and our economy, our jobs are, are dependent on stuff that we ship out of the country. You start messing with all of those, those, those trade links and we are in for a big, big shock. Mm -hmm.